Howdy my totally as always tubular gamers we're back with you guessed it another video thanks for coming back to the channel really appreciate you if you're new here maybe stick around for a while because I got a fun video for you today I'm going to be talking about the 10 best modern action RPGs a while back I talked about the 10 best modern turn based RPGs today we're giving the action game some love so here we have 10 of the very best modern action RPGs and when I say modern I mean like the last 10 or so years what you can play on your PS4 and 5 or Series X or Switch so sorry Skyrim you didn't make the cut and speaking of not making the cut let me know down below what games you think i'm missing there's a bunch of modern action rpgs i actually haven't played yet stuff like trials of mana or ease 8 and 9 or even dragon's dogma 2 i really just haven't gotten to it yet so let me know down below maybe in the future i'll make a just overall best action rpgs list versus just the modern games we'll see how it all goes please like share comment subscribe we got the patreon and the super thanks i've been talking enough let's just get right into the list and in the number 10 spot we have Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm sure there are plenty of people that are ready to click off the video at this point, but hear me out for a second. Kingdom Hearts 3, which is very much not the third mainline game in the series, has some flaws. It's got some issues. It's not even the best of the Kingdom Hearts series, but I still really did enjoy it. I enjoyed it back then, and I think it's actually still pretty decent to good now. When it comes to the story, I'll be the first to admit it is kind of stupid, even for Kingdom Hearts. Most of the game just has Sora traveling to other Disney worlds to like awaken his power or whatever. And it really feels like it's just a generic plot device so Sora can go to a bunch of Disney lands and talk to Disney characters. At least the story does move forward at the end and I think it's like half decent there. And when it comes to the voice acting, yeah, it's not very good either. But at least from a visual standpoint, I think the game looks very good. And then the game absolutely holds its own when it comes to the gameplay. This is really where Kingdom Hearts 3 excels and shines in my opinion and the main reason it's even on this list to begin with the combat in this game is so fun it's like an extension of Kingdom Hearts 2 and it just flows incredibly well it feels nice it's got a great pace to it there's a bunch of different moves you have several different keyblades all with unique abilities you can summon like the Disney rides to help you it's just got a great feel to it the combat is excellent in this game it is really fun and I remember the combat is really what kept me so into this game I was just having a blast destroying everything like when you get the Winnie the Pooh guns those things annihilate everything it's awesome the level design is pretty decent in this game as well it is rather linear but they keep trying to mix things up when you go to different Disney worlds and there's a bunch of set pieces that play throughout movies or original stories and I think the worlds you go to are good in this game it's cool you go to Frozen and Tangled even if those aren't the very best retellings of those stories but my favorite has to be the Toy Story and the Monsters Inc areas these are great I really love interacting with these characters the worlds are great and again there's interesting memorable set pieces in almost all of these levels especially like the Big Hero 6 level this is another banger of a level there's some really great stuff here and there's some awesome boss fights the boss fights are also pretty good in this game with all this there's still mini games that show up the gummy ship returns this is easily the best gummy ship gameplay of the entire series it's actually fun and yeah, maybe I've painted a little bit of a picture as to why I actually do enjoy Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes, it is rather easy, and even on the hardest difficulty, it won't exactly challenge you, not like Kingdom Hearts 2 did, and the story isn't the best, but I still do recommend this game if you like the series, if you want to see Disney and Final Fantasy come together. Oh wait, yeah, there's not really any Final Fantasy here outside of the DLC. Well, if you want to see a bunch of Disney characters and Sora show up, this is the game to do it. I think it's an enjoyable experience, it's certainly not perfect, but good time nonetheless and so here's another game that wasn't crazy well received but i love it and that's fallout 4. now when it comes to my argument with fallout 4 it's actually not that different from kingdom hearts 3. yeah it has flaws and it's certainly not the best of its series but i absolutely still really did enjoy my time with it and I think it's very much able to overcome its issues and still be a pretty good game. When it comes to the story, you actually do get to see the bombs going off, which was cool, but it's really about you exploring the wasteland looking for your son. And I think the initial premise is pretty intriguing and it is good. Unfortunately though, it does kind of fall apart by the end. And the ending in particular isn't amazing. When it comes to what I think is amazing in this game though, I think the sense of exploration and the general gameplay is pretty good. This game has that Bethesda-ass mentality that people love these games for, where you just go off into a direction and find stuff, find rewarding, meaningful content, whether it's new characters or some loot or a quest even. 
you get to just explore wherever you want and the game is able to keep you entertained. Of course, it is a first person shooter for the most part and the shooting is okay in this game. It's not like wonderful. You aren't going to be like, oh, I can't wait to get into another firefight, but it's functional and it's certainly the best of the Fallout franchise. And the RPG mechanics are just okay. I don't love that there's no karma and the dialogue system leaves a lot to be desired, but at least you can still build out your character, so that's cool. But what really makes up for all of this is just being able to explore the open world and do meaningful, intriguing, memorable quests. Whether it's the main quests or the side quests with the many factions, there's a ton of memorable quests here. Sure, when it comes to the quest design, it's not like crazy exciting, but it's memorable above all else. And all of this comes together to create a really solid, somewhat addicting gameplay loop. You'll want to explore all the areas, see everything that there is to see, talk to as many people as possible, and do as many interesting quests as you can. Sure, you can absolutely pick Fallout 4 apart. You can be like, the shooting sucks, the RPG mechanics suck, the presentation's lame, it's super buggy and doesn't work. But I think despite all of that, everything does come together actually rather well. The game is greater than the sum of its parts. It's when it's all together as an oiled machine that I think the game absolutely excels. And again, that sense of exploration is really great. I love just going off into any direction and finding stuff. I very much remember the first time I found the pirate ship or stumbling upon a new companion and then doing their entire quest. The companions are actually awesome in this game. A lot of these are some of the best companions of any Fallout game. I really did enjoy them. They're likable, they're memorable, and I really wanted to see where all of them would go. The game also has some pretty solid DLC that is very much worth playing in my opinion. I don't think it's that hot of a take to say that I think Fallout 4 is the best Bethesda game since Skyrim like Starfield in 76 really didn't do it for me. And despite Fallout 4's issues, I very much still love this game. I remember playing it like absolutely non-stop when it came out and even came back to it not that long ago after Starfield came out and went wow this is so much better than Starfield I love exploring the wasteland it's so memorable and interesting and the companions are great the quests are way better and it's just a better time overall if you haven't tried Fallout 4 and you like open world action RPGs it's worth playing and so here we have the only multiplayer game on the list, and that is Monster Hunter. Now, which Monster Hunter am I going with? I'm cheating, and I'm choosing two. I'm choosing World and Rise, both of which are excellent multiplayer games that are absolutely worth your time. When it comes to the Monster Hunter series, you know, it's been around quite a bit, but it really was Monster Hunter World that got the series super popular. I'm pretty sure it's Capcom's best-selling game ever at this point, and it very much deserves it. It maybe is the best Monster Hunter gameplay of them all, or it could be Rise, where they improve it and let you you jump and swing around. What I'm trying to get at is the Monster Hunter series. It doesn't really need much of an introduction. It's where you and up to four people go hunt down some big ass monsters. There's a bunch of different weapons here. There's tons of RPG elements. There's seriously so many monsters in these games to hunt down. You have content for almost ever and it really never gets old thanks to just how many different monsters there are, environments, and how many other factors come into play. If you're getting bored with it, try a different weapon. A lot of these play differently like the hammer plays very different from the great sword or the bow and arrow which has a completely different play style there's a ton of crafting here some of the best crafting of like any game like i just love how rewarding the crafting is just getting better gear and it creates a very addicting loop and i know plenty of people that have gotten absolutely sucked in and have not played anything else for months i know people with over a thousand hours in these games because there really is just so much to do here and sure these games don't have the fastest start to them especially world it takes a bit of time to get going but once it gets going it really gets going and the pacing actually becomes really great in these hunts where you're constantly just hunting down these monsters and it's just engaging rewarding gameplay through and through on top of this the presentation is great in these games especially world world is a real looker and then there's the awesome dlc iceborne for this one of the best dlcs like ever adding a bunch of more monsters weapons it's just a really great time and i haven't played a stupid amount of these games i'm still playing world even nowadays just to try to catch up on it before the new Monster Hunter. In the future, I definitely want to do a video dedicated to Monster Hunter and what I love about this series, but Monster Hunter World and Rise are very good action RPGs that are certainly worth your time, especially if you have buddies going with you. I mean, they're okay by themselves. It's probably the biggest flaw is that I don't think Monster Hunter is amazing in single player, but when you're with some friends, oh, these games are so good and are absolutely worth your time if you haven't tried them at this point.
And here we have Cyberpunk 2077, and this is very much after all of the updates. I, like many others, got Cyberpunk at release and went, what the fuck is this? It was super broken and was lacking in several key areas, and I couldn't bring myself to finish it after like 7 or 8 hours and some game-breaking bugs that were really wrecking my entire experience, I just gave up. But a few years later, I came back, there's an awesome DLC that's been released and they've updated a bit, maybe I'll try it again, and oh yeah, this is exactly what we all wanted. Not only is this what we wanted, but this is what we expected the 1.0 release to be, and it's a shame that it wasn't that, but, you know, better late than never, we've got a pretty great game here now. Taking place in 2077, this game has a really intriguing premise about V, your customizable character. You even get to customize your background, and I'm really not going to say any more than that. I actually think the story, it was good even when this game first came out, it's even better now. The story, the characters, the writing are all very memorable, intriguing and just different from like any other game I feel like I've played recently. There's been plenty of other cyberpunk games, but none of them hit like 2077. The story and the writing are really good in this game. The world building is also very good. But the big thing is that the gameplay has been completely overhauled from that original shit show. It's a very solid, capable first person shooter with plenty of RPG elements, and the RPG elements are actually good. I actually think the combat is quite enjoyable in this game. The shooting feels nice, it's satisfying, there's a bunch of different weapons, and depending how you build your character, it can be a totally different playstyle when it comes to the combat. I like how much you can customize your character, and again, the RPG elements, they're decent now. Crafting is actually worth a damn. And when it comes to the open world and the sense of exploration, it is actually pretty good. Driving around in the vehicle feels nice now, and there's a bunch of quests to do, whether it's the main story or all of the side objectives. It's all very much worth doing. The side objectives are actually interesting. They're not as good as the main quest, but they're actually good. They're not just generic cookie cutter shit. I mean, there is some of that and even some looping quests, but a majority of the side content is actually worth doing. You'll want to see everything that there is to see. It's very much worth your time, in my opinion. The presentation is still very good, and most importantly, the stability of the game is fine. It's not just crapping out of control, there's not a bunch of game-breaking bugs, it's not one of the worst releases ever anymore. It is a very stable, functional product that I can't actually recommend to you. The DLC is very good, it has a great story, and it really just expands on the world and the gameplay of the base game. I have no problem recommending this game at this point, and I totally think it's worth playing, you know, all these years later the game has been fixed but not only has it been fixed it really has been just completely overhauled and is absolutely worth your time it is one of the best action rpgs ever and i really enjoyed it but man that 1.0 version is always going to stick in my mind like why did they launch the game like that you know what T today's not the day to talk about that stuff right now i'm just going to say cyberpunk 2077 good game now worth your time and so here we have Xenoblade Chronicles. Now, a few people asked why I didn't have Xenoblade Chronicles in the turn-based RPG video, and that's because I think Xenoblade Chronicles is an action RPG. Like, I'm not crazy in thinking that Xenoblade is an action RPG, right? Complete with, like, timers, kind of like an MMO. I, this isn't turn-based. Anyway, we have Xenoblade Chronicles. Now, which one am I going to go with? My favorite's always going to be Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, but I'm also going to throw in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3 here. All three of them are available on the Switch, and they're all worth playing. They aren't sequels to each other either. They all tell very different tales, complete with different characters. But what they all have in common is they all have really thought-provoking, fascinating, great stories with intriguing characters that are incredibly memorable and lovable. Whether it's Shulk being able to see into the future and teaming up with all of his friends, or Rex teaming up with Pyra and their connection, or the entire cast of three, all of them have very different, intriguing worlds that are just not really like any other JRPGs. And I really have no problem telling people to go play this series for the story and characters alone. It's very much worth it, but when it comes to the gameplay, the gameplay is good. It is an action RPG, it is full of menus, and it is definitely different from like any other action RPG on this list. And it certainly isn't everyone's cup of tea. I know plenty of people look at this and go, what the fuck even is this interface? What am I looking at? This is a disaster. Nope, I'm out of here. Trust me, they introduce everything rather slowly. And yeah, by the end of it, it does look like a clusterfuck, but I actually think the game Play is pretty good, the battle system is good, it's very, very in-depth with a lot going on. Like, especially Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3, there is a lot going on with the battle system, and you could spend an entire 10-minute video just trying to explain every facet of it, and I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to say, I think the battle system is good. These games also have a pretty decent sense of exploration where you can just explore these pretty vast open worlds and just get a bunch of different quests. The side quests, they're not the most exciting, 
but they're not awful, they're not Ubisoft level, and I do enjoy them for the most part. These games are very big and very long also, taking well over 60, 70 hours. I remember when Xenoblade Chronicles came out for the Wii, people were calling it one of the longest games ever. Nowadays, there's a bunch of games that are the length of Xenoblade Chronicles. I don't know what that says about society or the games industry, but we have a lot of long games, and Xenoblade is not the only long series anymore, but these are long, epic games that I believe are worth your money, and more importantly, your time, because these are huge time sinks, especially if you play these games back to back to back, and then there's also the DLCs for 2 and 3 that people absolutely go nuts for. I have not tried them myself. I'm still playing through these long ass games. But I did finish the first Xenoblade Chronicles, and man, one of my favorite games maybe ever. Just such a good time. This series very much is worth it. And so here's a game that I feel like doesn't get enough love, and that is Neo 2. Now, Team Ninja have put out quite a number of Souls likes over the last few years, but none of them have come even close to Neo 2, in my opinion. And I'd actually say Neo 2 is the best Souls like game that isn't by From Software. Granted, I also haven't played Lies of P at this moment, but I really do love Neo 2. I remember I got it day one, was really excited, COVID was about to hit, and I played the shit out of this game. And I've come back over the years and I'm like, yeah, this game is better than Stranger's Paradise, better than Wolong, and certainly better than Rise of Ronin. Taking place actually before the first Neo in the Sengoku era, it sees you creating a character. And I'll just say you fight a lot of demons. Look, when it comes to the story of Neo 2 or really any of Team Ninja's games, it's never been particularly great. At least you do get some cool looking cutscenes though. No, where these games shine in particular is with the gameplay, and the gameplay of Neo 2 is really good. First off, the combat is just fantastic. Sure, it is a Souls-like, but it plays quite different from most Souls-likes. It's fast, frantic, and feels kind of like a hack and slash, more so than even a Souls-like. There are tons, and I mean tons of different weapons in Neo 2, and they all play very different from each other. And the combat above all else is just stupid, satisfying, challenging, rewarding, and fun. You can do some really cool looking shit and you'll feel like an absolute badass. Like you feel so cool in this game when you just decimate enemies and you fight a ton of different enemies in this game. A lot of them are returning from the first one, but the enemy roster is very good. They all have their own unique strategies. And I tell you, it just doesn't get more satisfying than wearing an enemy down to the point where their stamina runs out and then you just totally destroy them. Like it felt great in the first game, but it feels even better here. And I feel like no other Team Ninja game has just gotten this this right. Like, Wolong felt good, but it didn't feel this good. Like, Neo 2, ooh, it feels so good. And then when it comes to the level design, it's decent enough. It's not amazing, it's not as good as any of the From games, but it's fine. The game at least does reward you for exploring and going off the beaten path, so that is good. Too bad the rewards aren't actually that good, as this game just has a bunch of random loot and it's mostly shit. But that's not a deal breaker at all. When it comes to the presentation, I think the game looks good, but more importantly, it runs incredibly well. It's super smooth and was a rock solid 60 FPS. I think the action is fantastic in this game. The RPG elements are pretty good also. You really get to customize your character. The level design's good. The story might be whatever, but it all comes together to create a really great experience. The game has a ton of content. The side quests are absolutely worth doing with a bunch of exclusive bosses to them. Like you'll be playing this game well over 50, 60 hours. And I know plenty of people that have gone back and played through it several times over because it's just so much fun. And if you start getting bored, try a different weapon. They all play so differently from each other. Other. There's a bunch of abilities. Neo 2, it's just a great game. And it has me wondering if we'll ever get another game by Team Ninja that's as good as Neo 2, because all these years later, oh yeah, it's still real good. And so here we have Nair Automata. Now, I do not talk about this game anywhere near enough, heh, <laughs> get it? And that's a real shame because this is one of my favorite games of like the last decade. I actually love the Nier franchise. I even did a ranking video on all of them a few years back. I played the Drakengard games, I liked them even though they suck. There's the original Nier, which isn't very good, but the remake's pretty awesome. But then this game, ooh, this game, Nair Automata Pia, this game hits different. And really, there's been no other game since that has been able to hit quite like this game. As I'm recording this video, Stellar Blade is also not out, so keep that in mind. But yeah, when this game came out, I was just like blown away with almost every aspect of this game. It takes place in this very different, interesting open world that's like this post-apocalyptic world where humans are seemingly gone and it sees this like war going on between these alien created machines and then the human crafted androids still going at it all these years later and that's all I'm really gonna say you play as 2B and she's a very memorable main character for all the right and wrong reasons but it's not just her in this game there's actually a few other characters and I think the characters are very strong in this game the world is really strong 
and again, it just hits different. Like, it's kind of hard to explain unless you've played it. The game evokes a certain emotion, a certain vibe, an atmosphere to it that is unlike any other game. The other Nier games are nowhere near close to this game, pun intended. Okay, that was unintentional, but I've officially made the same joke twice in the same video. Please do not unsubscribe, I did not mean to post cringe. But you know what's not cringe is the gameplay of this game. Now, Nier and the Drakengard games really shit the bed in my opinion when it came to the hack and slash gameplay, and this is where this game actually excels because it was developed by Platinum Games who make some really awesome hack and slash games, and yeah, the hack and slash combat is very good in this game. It's satisfying, it's rewarding, there's depth, the combat is fun and engaging. There's a bunch of different elements going on here, and it's able to stay interesting throughout the game's pretty long runtime. There's plenty of RPG mechanics in here as well it's not just a straight hack and slash and then you have this open world to explore there are plenty of side quests that actually give you a lot of rewarding loot like new weapons and abilities and you'll want to do a lot of them especially if you're going for all the game's endings this game has a ton of different endings like 20 something and I really like all the endings and I think it's very much worth it to even 100% this game. It's one of those few games that I think is worth 100%ing because it's so rewarding, it's so fulfilling. The plot, while it is a bit slow, it is really rewarding and it does have a lot of great payoffs, especially if you go for the other endings or if you've played the other Nair game, then you'll go, ooh, I know that. The presentation is good, it still looks good even nowadays, the music is fan-freaking-tastic, it's so good in this game, and you really have just one of the most memorable, different, interesting games in the AAA space in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, like nothing has hit like this game did. And if you still haven't played it by this point, well I really don't know what you're waiting for, it's totally worth it. Ooh, but then we have Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the newest game on this list and the newest Final Fantasy game, which very much seems to be an action RPG series now. Final Fantasy VII continues to impress and really is immediately one of my favorite games of the last like 10 plus years. This game, it just has it all. I love the original game to death and this game feels like they took that original game and not only brought it to the modern era but really expanded on it as well. I was gonna have the Final Fantasy VII remake on here but after playing Rebirth, oh it's not even close. This game is way better than the remake. Taking place right after the Final Fantasy VII Remake and seeing Cloud and friends explore the world outside of Midgar, all I will say is that the story is excellent in this game. These are some of the best characters of any game. They're incredibly likable, lovable. They all have great personalities, a ton of depth. Story, setting, characters, writing, it's all just really well done. And when it comes to the gameplay, it's just as good. The combat is really great. I love the combat in the remake and this game. Like, it just flows so nice. Like, the way it all comes together is really great. I love how you're able to do attacks in real time and, like, block and dodge, but you can bring up the menu to use special moves when the ATB bar fills up. Like, it just feels really nice. All of the characters are very different from each other, and they're all incredibly fun to play as. They all have their own special attributes and moves and I really enjoy it. The combat feels nice, it has a really great flow to it, I really just don't have like any issues with the combat. And then when it comes to the game's progression and pacing and what you're actually doing outside of the combat, it's a bit different from Remake. Remake was a very linear straightforward game and there's plenty of linear straightforward moments here but most of the game sees you in these open worlds where you can explore, there's a bunch to do, there's a lot of monsters to fight, secrets to find, side quests, mini games, I think the open worlds are actually really well designed, I wanted to do everything, like not only was it rewarding, but it was just fun above all else, you'll want to see everything. And, you know, I've said it a few times in this video, but it just hit different. This game's open world hit different. Hopefully every Final Fantasy game that is open world is like this in the future because I just think this is really well done. I also really like how much variety there is in this game. I know some people don't like the mini games. I actually really did enjoy the mini games and I thought they brought a lot to the game. I'll be the first to admit some of them are shit. Doing the sit-ups does suck, but they somehow made Fort Condor fun, so they succeeded somewhere. But the game is constantly having you do different things, you're in different environments, and it feels like you're doing something different every few hours, which keeps things varied, keeps things interesting, and you'll want that because this is a very long game, especially if you do even some of the side content, you're looking at 60 plus hours easy, but it's very much worth it. The game looks fantastic, it has a great soundtrack, and this game really dug its hooks into me and I didn't want to play like anything else, and I'm really disappointed now that we're going to have to wait a few years to see the next game because... This was just so good. If that next one is just as good as this, ooh, it's gonna be something special. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Right now it is only on PS5, but 
very much is worth playing. And so here we have a game that needs no introduction at all, and that is The Witcher 3. I feel like I've talked about this game a dozen times at this point, but I'll talk about it a dozen more because The Witcher 3, it really is one of my favorite games of all time. It really is, in my opinion, one of the greatest games of all time, and you know what? It's an action RPG taking place after Witcher 1 and 2, but very much not being required reading. It sees our man Jerry of the River looking for Siri. And as usual, that's all I'm really going to say because I don't want to spoil things. I actually really like the Witcher 3 story. It is more low-key and it isn't, you know, this big world-altering event. You don't have to go save the world, but I can appreciate that. I also think the game is great for people who didn't play the first two Witcher games. You can easily jump into this and understand everything quite quickly, but if you did play the older Witcher games, it's going to be pretty cool that some other stuff like the Wild Hunt actually do show up, which are mentioned all the way back in the first game. The world of Witcher 3 is really fleshed out and all of the characters are pretty solid, especially Ciri. She's really great. And then when it comes to actually playing the game, oh it's great. It really is one of the best action RPGs of them all. The game has a pretty sizable open world that you get to freely explore and go do basically whatever the hell you want. There's obviously the main quest and plenty of people that want to kill you, but you are free to explore to your heart's content and there's a bunch of memorable side quests that are here for you to find. There's also hunts where you go hunt down monsters and these are really great. I actually really like the hunts and had a good amount of fun doing literally every single one. I tried to do as much side content in this game as possible because it's all rewarding, it's fulfilling, it's interesting, it's almost as good as the main quest. Like, so many games have just shit side missions where it's super generic or cookie cutter, it feels like you're checking off a box, not this game. The side content was really praised back when it came out and almost 10 years later, it's still really good now. It's some of the best side content you'll find in any RPG. And with this game being an RPG, how are the RPG elements? Oh, they're actually pretty great. They're way better than like Witcher 2's, which just felt really janky and clunky to be honest. This feels really great, and the same really goes for the combat. I know the combat is clearly not everyone's cup of tea, but I've always enjoyed the combat. I think it's functional, it's decent, I like how much strategy you can go into it. If you play on the harder difficulties, you'll really have to learn weaknesses for the enemies and you really will want to have strategies when going up against some of the bigger monsters otherwise they're just going to wipe the floor with you. I very much enjoyed the combat, I enjoyed the RPG elements, the presentation was great for the time, still looks good nowadays, the DLC is phenomenal just like Cyberpunk, the DLC is very good in this game. And with all that you really have one of the greatest games ever. Everybody has praised this game to hell and back and I'm gonna do the same and just say very much is worth playing and is one of the greatest games ever. And so here we have it, the best modern action RPG of them all and well, I'm gonna cheat and just say all of From Software's Souls games, whether it's the Dark Souls Remaster, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, and of course Elden Ring, in my opinion, modern action RPGs do not get better than these games. I very much love the Souls series to death and I noticed when I was initially making this list that yeah Dark Souls and Bloodborne and Elden Ring were kind of dominating the list so I just put them all together and here's my number one. I mean when it comes to action RPGs it really doesn't get much better than this series. Like all of these games are phenomenal and they very much are all worth your time. I know that Souls likes or Souls kinds of games are not everyone's cup of tea but I think if you have even a mild amount of interest then these games are all worth playing especially Elden Ring. All of these games they might not have the most straightforward story but they all have very interesting worlds and each game does try to do something different particularly Bloodborne really tries to be different from the other games with a great atmosphere. The atmosphere though in all of them is good. Something else that's really great in all of them is the combat. The combat obviously gets better the newer the game but I think the combat has always been good. It's very rewarding, it's challenging, it's slow, it's methodical, there is a bit of strategy behind it, and I enjoy it all. Another common theme amongst these games is the sense of exploration. These games have some of the best sense of exploration in any video game ever. You are always rewarded for going off the beaten path, especially in Elden Ring. You'll get meaningful good shit in all of them, and you'll want to see everything. And you'll really want to fight like everything, and I love the boss fights in these games. All of these games have great boss fights, again, especially Elden Ring. There's so many good boss fights, there's just a ton of boss fights, period. There's a lot of enemies, they all have their own strategies, and you'll need to fight them a few times to really understand them. And that gameplay, man, it's so rewarding, it's so fulfilling, and it just all really comes together. I love the RPG side of things as well, how you get to really customize your build, your character, how you want to play the game. 
it's all very customizable. Of course, in Elden Ring, it's the most customizable. Look, of all of these games, it's clear Elden Ring is my favorite, but all of these games are very good, and even if you've played Elden Ring, that doesn't mean you shouldn't go back to the old ones because you played the best one. No, the older games are very much worth playing, especially Bloodborne, which for some reason still hasn't come to PC. When I was with SIE, there was never any talk of it coming, and so who knows if it'll ever come to PC, but Bloodborne is still very much worth playing, even at its 30 FPS, that stuff doesn't really bother me. All of these games look great, they all have fantastic worlds and atmospheres, they're all interesting, they all have superb gameplay, and there's very clearly a reason that there's a series known as the Souls-like series now. These games really were trendsetters, and so many other games have fallen in their footsteps. I mean, I even had Neo 2 on here, which is also pretty similar, but nothing's ever going to beat the From Software games, to me at least. Maybe in the future, but at this time, no. The From Software games are the best action RPGs you could play, not only in modern day, but maybe of all time. Like, video games don't get much better than this, and if you really don't like these games, well, that's a real shame because you're really missing out, but hopefully there was something here on the list that you would enjoy and you'll like, and hopefully at least one more person will give one of these games a shot. I'm sure there are plenty of games I missed, so let me know down below. I didn't even include any of those big Sony games. I don't know, I didn't want to really include those, I wasn't really feeling it, so I guess if you made it to this part of the video, you can comment concrete, as in what's in the ground and buildings, that's our secret code word, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you all have a wonderful day, hope you enjoyed the video, Bye bye now.